We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we are in bondage, bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what, what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have then, not then loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
let us pray. O oh God, in the transfiguration of your Son, you confirmed the mysteries of the faith by the witness of Moses and Elijah, and in the voice from the bright cloud declaring Jesus, your beloved Son. You foreshadowed our adoption as your children. Make us heirs with Christ of your glory and bring us to enjoy its fullness through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and wait there. I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandments, which I have written for their instruction. So Moses set out with his servant Joshua, and Moses went up into the mountain of God. To the elders he had said, Wait here for us until we come to you again, for Aaron and her, and her are with you. Whoever has a dispute may go to them. Then Moses went up the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. On the seventh day he called to Moses out of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain. Moses was on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now read the psalm responsively. The Lord is king. Let the people tremble. The Lord is enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth shake. The Lord, great in Zion, is high above all peoples. Let them confess God's name, which is great and awesome. God is the Holy One. O mighty King, lover of justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord and fall down before God's footstool. God is the Holy One. Moses and Aaron among your priests, and Samuel among those who call upon your name, O Lord. They called upon you. And you answered them. You spoke to them out of the pillar of cloud. They kept your testimonies and the decrees that you gave them. O Lord, our God, you answered them indeed. You were a God who forgave them, yet punished them for their evil deeds. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord and worship upon God's holy hill. For the Lord, our God, is the Holy One. A reading from Second Peter. For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we had been eyewitnesses of his majesty, for he received honor and glory from God the Father when the voice was conveyed to him by the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven, we, while we were with him on the holy mountain. So, we have the prophetic message more fully confirmed. You will do well to be attentive to this, as to a lamp shining in a dark place, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. First of all, you must understand this, that no prophecy of scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation. Because no prophecy ever came by human will, but men and women, moved by the Holy Spirit, spoke from God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to St. Matthew, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah, talking with him. 
Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them. From, from the cloud a voice said, This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up, do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, Tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace be to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Sometimes I prefer to watch shows, movies, and events that make me laugh. Laughter is the operative activity needed to change my feelings and opinions about what is happening and going on in my life. Several times my need moved me to watch movies by one writer, director, and producer, Mel Brooks. Brooks's material is not for everyone, but it reminds me of British humor I tend to prefer over American sitcoms and shows. I was looking through social media one day and saw the preview of the sequel of one of Mel Brooks's movies, History of the World, Part 1. This movie was panned across the board, and I am unaware of any movie critic giving it a positive review. But many of us have made the movie a cult classic. Many of Mel Brooks's movies and satires are not for everyone, and some situations are inappropriate to share with everyone. Some of you went to see me play the role of Inspector Kemp in the musical version of Mel Brooks's movie, Young's Frankenstein. I tried to warn people that the humor that was going to be in the musical was going to be a bit different, and not something that we expect, especially when we go to musicals from Disney. So I'm excited about the possibility of seeing the sequel of Mel Brooks's movie, History of the World. The purpose of previews is to motivate people to see the movie that will soon be available. Many of us get tired of watching previews when we go to a film because we want to see the movie we pay to see. Several times, I embarrassed my family by saying out loud, Come on, show the movie! The previews are supposed to set us up for what we will see in the coming future when that movie is released. Today we observe the transfiguration of our Lord Jesus Christ. Peter, James, and John witnessed a wonderful event. They saw our Savior transfigured in what? They caught Jesus talking to important people of the faith, Elijah the prophet, and Moses the deliverer of God's people out of Egypt. Peter was so excited about it that he suggested afterwards they create booths for all of the participants up there so that people could come up the mountain and possibly worship. But like in the chapter before, Jesus tells them that that's not what he was called to do. There are many times in our gospel that the, that the disciples saw previews, moments of what the so-called movie of the life of Jesus Christ is going to be about. Peter, James, and John saw a preview of what was ahead of them as Jesus expounded a couple of times for them not to share with others until the Son of Man was crucified and raised from the dead. This understanding makes it difficult for us to really figure out what the transfiguration is all about for us as people of God. Are we like the people who sit in a movie theater excited about a preview that they just saw? Are we like many of us who are impatient? do not care about the previews, and want to get to the movie we paid for. When I was in seminary as a student with the requirement of preaching twice a semester at the parish 
where I was doing field education work, I noticed a particular trend that all of my fellow students dealt with along with me. We realized that many pastors gave us the assignment to preach on Transfiguration Sunday. And we concluded that maybe this was one of the Sundays that was the least favorite among them. One of the reasons is the difficulty in explaining mystical moments that we do not personally experience. When someone has a mystical experience, it is hard to explain to people what happened to them. Many skeptics would conclude that they are making it up. And we have reached this point of our faith in the year 2023. And we are talking about a moment where we have not experienced something mystical. Still, we have confidence in the mystical experience that Peter, James, and John witnessed. As Lutherans and skeptics, along with a lack of trust, are two things we cannot figure out. For the most part, we are like everyone sitting in a movie theater, seeing the preview of what is ahead, we can look at it historically as Peter, James, and John saw the preview of the upcoming life, death, and resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We are moving in to the time of Lent, during which we remember the events that led to our salvation. So, how does the transfiguration of our Lord fit into our immediate context? Jesus' appearance and glory anticipate or foreshadow his resurrection. And the reminder for us, when we recite in the Apostles' Creed, Jesus' return. Maybe one could liken the transfiguration to what I've mentioned about movie previews. And so could they help us understand or confirm the prophecy of Jesus' resurrection that Jesus said earlier in chapter 16, which included his prophecy of the second coming. Maybe this is a time as we move into our season of Lent, beginning this Ash Wednesday, seeing the power of the transfiguration as a moment that leads to fruitful reflections to prepare ourselves and how we can view Jesus, God's Son, doing so much for all of us. We know the story and we have a glimpse of the previews. But the transfiguration is at the beginning of the moment of time for us to trust in the mystical things that have happened in our faith that they can also happen to us. To be open and view what God reveals to us, like Peter, James, and John. What we hear today is the beginning of our anticipation of Easter. The excitement is a part of the premiere of the movie we are excited to see. The transfiguration imposes the foreshadowing of the present and future glory of the new humanity. It not only climaxes Jesus' ministry in Galilee, especially his training of his disciples for future ministry, it also offers us a glimpse of the outcome of Jesus' career and, by inference, the identical glory that awaits his disciples. It is a preview that mystically affects us. It is a reminder that we will be like Jesus. We will be transfigured with all of our loved ones, past and present. We will be challenged to trust in God's power in all our lives. Jesus, God's Son, is superior to both the representatives of the Old Testament. He is God's agent and surrogate who inaugurates the reign of God. The question that goes before us is whether we are ready to be a part of and see and not just be a part of watching the previews. Moving into the time of Lent becomes a challenge whether we will inaugurate after Jesus' death and resurrection and his attendant dissolution of the old and bring about the new. 
It is a challenge to see things beyond our rationality and be open to the mystical value of what Jesus has in store for us and how the preview moves us to trust in the promises it offers. God's everlasting grace and love. Amen. Let us affirm our faith together with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Trusting that God hears us, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Holy God, your loving power is at work among us. Rouse and embolden your church that we too might be transfigured. Set a light in the world for the sake of the gospel. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Awesome God, you speak and the earth trembles. You display your majesty in the mountains and your mystery in the clouds. Grant that we discover your magnificent in all of your created world. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Ruler of nations, your reign extends across all human borders. Guide world leaders in justice and righteousness, that they may work for equity for all people and protect the world that you have made. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Gracious God, you are a refuge for all who are neglected and abused. 
Bring freedom to those who are oppressed and give comfort to those experiencing pain of any kind. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of Moses and Elijah, you made your dwelling place at the top of a mountain with Jesus and his disciples. Dwell also in this congregation that all who enter this community might be transformed by your dazzling brilliance. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Everlasting God, you offer eternal life to all your children. Thank you for the witness of those who lived and died in the faith. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Confident that you are able to accomplish more than we even dare to ask, we bring these prayers before you, believing in your saving grace revealed in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.